Hi everybody. I thought I'd show you how I made my zombie doll head on a pedestal. It has molded teeth and a horn as you can see. Uh, it's a great project for Halloween but you can use the technique to create any theme that you want to using your own baby doll. Make this is great for an angel or anything. Anyway, here's how I did it. Okay, so the first thing we're going to do, oh, you're going to need black gesso. I use black gesso um, because I wanted to really cover everything. You could use whatever you like. Um, the first thing I'm going to do is uh, cut the head off because I just want the head. Um, and, you know, I've done, these. this is a, not a good doll in my opinion because of the cloth business. And um, Julie puts hers on a pedestal and I thought that would be kind of cool to do. So off with the head. Okay, come on. Okay, into the garbage. Oops, and now we shall just so. I'm just going to use my black gesso. This is Liquitex. It doesn't matter who's used. Um, you could take this off if you wanted to. Uh, if you got really careful. I think it's kind of cool though and I might keep that on there. Anyway, so let's, um, let's start gessoing. Uh, gesso is pretty, will stay in your hands for a bit. You might want to use gloves. It doesn't bother me. So I just put it right on. And I kind of like that zombie effect. Julie leaves hers um, um, not uncovered, so the blue comes through. I'm going to cover mine, and let's see what happens. So anyway, we, why do we put gesso on? So that the paint adheres. That's the only reason. So let's black out those eyes as best we can. But just shoving it in there. And the only reason I use a sponge brush is because they're cheap and I can throw it away and without guilt. A lot of people keep everything, but gosh, I have enough already. Okay. So, slobber it on. Okay, so the gesso is dry. And, um... Now what we're going to do is we're going to apply some color for the underneath part that's going to show through some of the cracks that we hopefully get when we apply the, um, the white glue. So I've got my palette here, which is, uh, I just chose some colors that I thought might go good underneath the color that I'm going to put on top. So here I've got uh, some cobalt blue. It's the end of the, the tube, so that's why I'm putting that there. I use uh, Golden um, for that. I found some old Liquitex, so I just grabbed those for the color. Uh, this one is Prism Violet, which is that color. Oops, and this one is Brilliant Purple, which is that. Now, these are really old. I got them in a garage sale, so I don't even know if they still make these colors. But everything else I have is new. Uh, this is uh, That Orange by Golden, and Dyrolyled yellow. I don't know how to spell it. D say it. D i a r y l i d e yellow. The reason I chose them is that because they're super um, bright, and if you do get a little crack, something will come through. So that's why I did that. Now we're gonna just put these on, um, not everywhere, but a lot of places. So I have a brush, some water, and go for it. Um, let's see. Let's put the yellow on. Again, wherever you think it might be interesting. And a healthy amount to cover that black, right? So, you can see what that's like. Sorry, I keep forgetting about the camera. Now I'm going to switch to my orange. 
I'm just going to wipe off my brush actually on the form. Oops, I'm sorry. Just wipe off my brush on the form. This is part of my um, scrapbook. So I'm doing double duty. Mark making and wiping off my brush. So here's some go some orange. Now it may seem like a hodgepodge now, but remember that crackle is not going to happen everywhere. So it's still going to be cool, interesting. Let's turn that around. Let's put some of that lighter purple on. Okay, now we're going to let that dry just a little bit. And then we'll put on our um, Elmer's glue. You can take this as far as you want to with these colors. Okay, let's let it dry. Okay, so now you want your piece to be dry to the touch. Now I've been touching this a lot and things have come up and I put some paper towel on it. It's almost dry to the touch. So I'm going to put my Elmer's glue on now all over this piece. Um, it's just a, a, another way to uh, get a crackle going because the glue separates from the acrylic paint. <clears throat> uh, other places make crackle paint. <clears throat> you can go ahead and try them. I had the glue at the, at the time at hand, so that's why I used it. And it, it's cheap also. So what's wrong with saving a little money? That way you can buy more doll's heads. So just cover with the glue all over. I'm just being careful of the eyes because um, I don't want to glue down those eyelashes. And I want to get a good effect. Okay. Any little mishap that happens is okay because remember this is a ghoulie so doesn't have to be perfect perfect that would be a little crazy for a ghoulie anywhere that you want that crackle to be put it on now I say put on more because it's not going to crackle everywhere So where you want it to crackle, it probably won't. You know how it always works. Now, you, you might have used your heat gun to uh, help the drying process, like I did. But if you go too close, you'll bubble the, um, because acrylic paint is really plastic, you'll bubble the, um, the plastic. I mean, you can get some cool effects that way, but I'd save that for the next layer. But whatever. It's your piece. Do what you want to. Okay, so now we can... Put on, we're going to let that sit, because that does have to dry, obviously. <clears throat> and um, don't, I wouldn't heat gun that to dry. I'd let that air dry. To the touch. Okay, so now we have the waiting game. Okay, while the last bit of this glue dries up, let's... Um, decide what color we're going to make the okay. it's kind of a nice sick color but I can also modify that so it's okay if when you're done you're like mm, I don't think so oh, that's kind of cool already what am I gonna do with that mouth hmm interesting Well, I can always paint over it, so let's put it on. Well, hmm. I don't know. I must think I'm just going to do the top lip. Let's 
see. Yeah. Here's where, you know, your finesse comes in. Now I'm going to take a smaller brush and go in and get the, uh, since I have the paint here, I don't feel like remixing. I'm just going to go in and get the close to the eyes I can. Okay, so um, what I did so far is I added some um, drool to the ear with, with uh, cobalt blue and some um, Van Dyke brown. I added some uh, goop or something coming out of the mouth because I thought that was kind of cool. And some more ear stuff going on. I hope you can see that. Okay, so... Now again, it's time to step back and look. Oops, did I just put that in paint? No. All right, so anyway, it's time to step back and look and see what else can I do. So right now what I'm looking at is the eyes. And I think what I'm going to do is uh, just open them up a little bit with a little bit of uh, bluey purple. And on the bottom. equal amounts of uh, A and B two-part epoxy clay, A-P-O-X-I-E clay. And I'm just going to mix them together thoroughly thoroughly quickly apply to head okay this will dry really quickly I mean like uh, 15 minutes and it'll fully cure overnight but it'll be good enough to uh, work with do we like it this way let's make sure you're happy because once it dries it's on there forever I think that's good all right, let's let this dry. By then, the teeth might have set up. Um, and the only reason I didn't use the epoxy clay on the teeth was just to show you another uh, material to use. Um, you know, they make a lot of inclusions. Um, Matisse makes uh, different kinds of inclusions. So does Golden. Things with sand and lava and... Uh, oh my gosh, you know, you've seen it all, the Michaels play see what you know works for you what you like this is just what I had on hand so that's why I'm using it all right let's let this dry so the molding paste has pretty much dried so I took some uh, white with a little bit of uh, Van Dyke brown and I just brushed it over to give those teeth some character as you can see there and then for the um, the horn I just took some um, Van Dyke Brown with some gold and I modeled, painted painted the uh, connection point so it sort of looks like it's really growing out of the, the head. And then I added some uh, gold with white on the horn. And now I'm just going to um, accentuate a little bit with some iridescent white just to see, just to bring up some of the highlights. So that's where we are with this. I love the way the eyes glow. See the, the goop coming out of the ears. I think we're done with this. The only thing I have to do now is put some, I'm going to put some lace on to the, um, on top of the, uh, the neck here, the neck piece. This is the finished um, project. I took some lace and added it to the bottom. I finished the um, horn with some purple. I added some detail uh, to make it look more like it was growing out of the head. And I kind of like the way those eyes glow and the drool comes out of the mouth and the teeth. So this is what it looks like. And then I have a, uh, a pedestal that I'm going to put it on. And it will look like this. There you go, you're a ghoulie on a pedestal.